This is the fastest gaming laptop with full powered RTX 4050 graphics for under a thousand US dollars. It's Acer's Nitro 5 and it's the exact same laptop as last year's version, except Acer have updated the GPU to a 4050 now, meaning that it has the latest features like DLSS 3 frame generation. It's available right now for $950. You can find a link to this sale below the video, but even without the sale, a thousand dollars is great compared to the competition. Take MSI's GF63 for example, the only other RTX 4050 gaming laptop I've reviewed so far. Right now on sale, this thing costs $20 more than the Nitro, but it's worse in pretty much every way. MSI should honestly be embarrassed. Acer's Nitro 5 from last year is also available with RTX 3060 graphics, but it costs $172 more compared to the 4050 Nitro. So let's see how they compare in games. Let's start out with Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p high settings, with the 4050 Nitro 5 highlighted in red. In this game, it's actually slightly faster compared to that more expensive Nitro 5 with 3060, despite the 2022 Nitro that I tested actually having a higher tier i7 processor, which would make it even more expensive than the i5 one. But check this out, the 4050 Nitro is 27% faster compared to the 4050 GF63, which actually costs more money. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. This time, the 3060 Nitro from last year was slightly ahead. But again, mine had a higher tier i7. But even if the i5 one performs the same, don't forget it's $172 more expensive just to get less than 2 FPS extra. Not exactly great value. The 4050 Nitro was 23% faster compared to MSI's ripoff GF63 with lower powered 4050 graphics. The newer 4050 and older 3060 Nitros were quite close together in control as well. Again the 3060 was slightly ahead, but definitely not worth the 18% higher price tag. Some of the other 3060 laptops were a little more ahead, but it's honestly not that much of a difference at the end of the day. The 4050 Nitro had a massive 42% higher average FPS compared to the more expensive GF63 this time. Again, seriously just embarrassing for MSI. They need to drop that price a couple of hundred dollars minimum. You might have noticed that I had the Nitro's 4050 minimum power limit listed as 75 watts, and that's because that's what it actually ran at in the Heaven GPU stress test due to a voltage limit. The 4050 generally doesn't really run above 90 to 100 watts in actual games, despite Acer and Nvidia saying that this is a 140 watt GPU, but I've already explained that in a dedicated video. Regardless, the cheaper 4050 50 Nitro was often matching the more expensive 3060 Nitro. Add in the benefits of frame generation, and I think at $950, the 4050 Nitro makes sense, especially compared to MSI's more expensive GF63, which, let's face it, is kind of a joke compared to the Nitro that no one should seriously consider. It's not all just about gaming though, there are some problems with the Nitro that you need to know about before considering buying it, like the screen. It's using the exact same 1080p 144Hz panel as last year, which wasn't great as the colours just don't look the best. It doesn't get that bright either. I like to see 300 nits at full brightness as a minimum, but the Nitro was just under this. It's less of a concern if you play games in a darker room, but a brighter room may not be great. It does at least have a muck switch though, which is actually quite rare in sub $1000 gaming laptops. There's no advanced Optimus, meaning you have to manually reboot to turn Optimus on or off but that is a more premium feature, so not surprising. For the same reason, there's definitely no G-Sync, but there's no adaptive sync at all. The screen response time was also quite slow at 17 milliseconds, but we can see it's about the same and within the margin of error range to the 2022 and 2021 Nitro 5, because Acer is still using the same panel model. Anyway, it's one of the slower results, but at least it's still faster than the GF63. The total system latency is the amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen in CSGO. It's similar to last year's Nitro, but the 2021 models are slower despite having the same screen, which I suspect is due to them not having a muck switch. The GF63 does not have a muck switch either for that matter, and it's about 4 milliseconds slower. Don't get me wrong, for just playing games at this price point, it is acceptable, at least compared to the competition. But if you've got a bit more budget, then it could be worth going up to the 
1200 US dollar price range or so to get a better screen. CPU performance was quite good. I mean, it's basically matching one of the best Ryzen laptops from last year in both single and multi-core performance. Lenovo's Legion 7. And that costs way more money. My 2022 Nitro is a bit better because again, that had a higher tier i7 processor from the same generation. But 12th gen still offers a fairly nice improvement compared to the Nitro with 11th gen i5 CPU. To further illustrate just how bad MSI's more expensive GF63 is, the Nitro was scoring 57% higher in multi-core while being a little cheaper. Unfortunately, the performance drops back quite a bit if we unplug the charger and run the same test on battery power. The single core score in particular was quite low compared to other laptops tested. And this also happened on my 12th gen Nitro last year too. So definitely seems like it's a Nitro thing and not bad luck. That said, the multi-core score was at least still 33% higher than the more expensive GF63. Battery life isn't much different compared to last year's Nitro because it's got the same battery. The i5 was able to last a bit longer than last year's i7 though, and the 4050 lasted longer than the 3060 in a game, implying it's more power efficient with both limited to 30 FPS. I'll just briefly skip through some content creator test results. In every case, the Nitro was always beating the more expensive GF63, simply because it's got a higher powered 4050 and better CPU. Acer also have the brand new Nitro 16 and Nitro 17 designs this year, but they also kept last year's Nitro 5 and just refreshed it with RTX 40 GPUs. I guess because this existing chassis design is probably just cheaper than the newer versions. I will review the newer models as soon as I can. I just had to buy this Nitro 5 as it looked like a 4050 gaming laptop that was finally priced well. Unfortunately, it ended up costing me a whole lot more money to import it here to Australia to make this video. But this is made possible with support from viewers like you on Patreon. You can get access to our Discord community and behind the scenes videos with the link below the video. As everything else on the Nitro, like ports, internals, build quality and design are all the same, there's no point covering absolutely everything in this video. Check out my full review over here if you want to see all the details. You can also see how the RTX 4050 graphics performs with DLSS3 frame generation and ray tracing in this one. I've compared it against the RTX 3060 in 25 games at 1080p and 1440p resolutions.